welcome friends to this monthly meeting and we get together here to understand the nature of our spiritual journey what we are heading for when i get emails from different people i get an idea of what they are thinking a spiritual journey leads us to so i have to make some stories to tell them how to reach where you are trying to reach some people say not some many that we are trying to reach our true home that we have found out this world is not our home we are trying to find our true home such khand many saints and mystics have described that there is no problem no mind no duality in our true home at a great place to be in so we want to leave this place and go to our true home so then i have to concoct some stories where the true home is how to go there if i tell the truth my stories will fall apart supposing i tell the truth you are right now in your true home they say what will we talking all the time i said that's why i can't tell you the truth the truth is we never left our true home we cannot leave it the whole creation is taking place in the true home the whole experience of several homes including this one is all taking place in one true home that's the totality of consciousness if it is total there can be nothing outside of it all creation is there so what we discover by traveling very fast that we reached where we were here that is why they say there is no space except here we are always here no matter where you are and we are always in now no matter what time you count you can create any number of past any number of future create as much time as you like you are always in the now you are always here what will happen if we go true home we will find the real nature of what is here and what is now that's all that happens just because we are not experiencing our true home we start calling it a spiritual journey there is no journey at all the spiritual path has no journey at all it's a state of awareness what do you know how much do you know do you know who you are do you know where you belong or are you looking at the garments we are wearing as your own self that's the whole thing if we are wearing something upon ourselves and start thinking what we are wearing in ourselves that's the only problem that's the only thing that requires a spiritual journey or a spiritual path we are wearing the physical bodies calling ourselves the self we are thinking the physical body is our self i am not reading this from here by the way this is a different thing. this is a more serious thing i am wearing a body therefore i say this is the name given to my body i call it my name myself is my body myself is something happening in the body myself is the one that has sense perceptions and therefore i see a world myself is able to think therefore i have a mind myself can rationalize myself can use logic myself can understand therefore that is myself and i am alive therefore myself all these fit into the one single garment we are wearing a physical body what would happen if we don't have a physical body when we die in the physical body we have no physical body if the whole thing is only the physical body with all these functions taking place in the body we disappear that means life here is merely a very short experience of having a physical body having the capacity to have self perception through the sense organs in the body having a brain that can think and some kind of thing that will make us alive because we borrowed the life from somebody else our mothers 
And when the time is over, everything is over. If that is so, then there is no problem. Live your life as best as you can with the short time you have. Take advantage. See how best you can use these facilities given to you. Make best use of your body. Make best use of your thinking mechanism. Make best use of your sense perceptions. Make best use of your life. But why aren't we doing it? We are not doing that at all. We are making plans. We are making plans in time. We are making plans to do so many things. And we know before we can do those things, we may drop dead. And those things, what will happen? And if we are just given one particular span of life to live, how come we see people like ourselves in very different lifestyles? Why couldn't we have a better lifestyle? Who made it? Who designed this one span of life? Did we have a hand in it? If so, couldn't we do a better job? It's only for one life. But could we have a hand in it if we were not even there? Where did we suddenly come from? These are the questions that bother us, even if we think it's only one lifespan. Therefore, we invent stories. We invent stories. No, there is a creator somewhere outside. We call him God, Allah, Parmeshwar, Ishwar. We call him Zeus. We give him all kinds of names to justify that whoever created us, we were so different, all of us, there has to be some creator somewhere. So we make a big story that a creator exists somewhere. And we, because of sense perceptions, give us an experience of time and space. We look at the space. Long ago, he might have designed how to come here. When we look at space, we begin to measure the size of the space. How big is it? Did it start with our birth or was it there before? Well, we can count the days of our birth. We can count how many years we have been here. We were born, we count, I am so old. I was here 20 years, I was here 40 years, I was here 90 years. We can count the years and we have a method of counting what we are seeing. And when we see outside, we say, this sun was there much before we were born. These galaxies were there much before we were born. Where did they exist? We only saw them when we were born. Where did they exist? If they existed, and all evidence we can use with our minds, say they existed prior to us. If that is so, who made them? If something can make them, could not that same power make us? These kinds of thoughts go into our head and make us question everything that is happening around us. And therefore, easy story, there is a God sitting up who is made us. Where is he sitting? Must be in some other completely different place. Must be somewhere up in the heavens. Where, are, where is heaven? Heavens are up in the sky. So I see people really worshipping a God who sits right up somewhere. All these are stories. So we make so many stories about the whole nature of our experiences here. Then we make a nice story to explain how we are so different. This must be something relating to a cause before we are born. Because we are born different. We are not made different later. We should all be born the same. If we change afterward, it would be different. We are born different in different places. Places that we believe existed prior we were born. There is some world going on around us which is much older, much longer. These are very tough questions. So we design more stories. 
there are past lives and past lives have created a new law of karma, law of action and reaction. Good story. It's one of the finest stories that the law of karma can create the whole sequences of things and then we explain why so and so is rich must have done good deeds in the past. Why is somebody poor must have done bad deeds. Why is somebody so sick all the time? Why is somebody so healthy? Good explanation we found with a wonderful story. Any proof of this story except these conclusions we are coming to from our observation? No proof at all. No proof of God's existence. Nobody has ever seen. No proof of the law of karma being real or not real. No proof of it. No proof of reincarnation or not. All stories. We love stories. And that is why we make these stories and accept them. We accept them totally blindly. When do the stories start? When we are born. Where we are born. What our parents are believing. We started believing that. It's very difficult to change that. And then we make the stories into a nice category called religion. Religion comes up to contain all these stories and we make them reality because we believe in religion and somebody sitting on the top of religion we call God. Nobody has seen, nobody has verified. But, but very good stories. We are able to use these stories to verify everything. If we tell the truth to somebody, the stories get demolished. If you tell somebody, there is no such thing as time and space, we are just generated for the sake of an experience here. There is no God except your own totality of consciousness within yourself. There is no other place except your totality. Cuts away with all the stories. Truth cannot be understood. That is why we rely on lies. Everything we are telling is a lie. Some mystics have been very bold. And Guru Nanak says, this is a lie. This world is a lie. Everything you see is a lie. What you think you are is a lie. Everything is a lie. What are we looking for on a spiritual path? Why are we gathered here? What, what is our aim? True home to whom, if he says inside us, where we are, what are we looking for? We are there. Then what's the big journey about? Some people say, we don't look for truth. We look for reality. We want to know what is real. They want to distinguish between illusion and reality. What is real? What is the definition of real? What looks real or what is real? What is the distinction? What looks real, the only way we can say what looks real is by confirmation with our sense perceptions. Is this glass real? Is the water in it real? I can touch the glass with my hands. I can drink the water. Taste good, is cool. All the things that I expect in real glass of water is right there. Therefore, the glass is real. Are we sure this is a good way to test reality? Not really, because if I was having a dream in a sleep, and we all dream and we all have sleep, in dreams also we see glasses of water. If I saw the same glass of water on the same table and the same crowd of people in a dream and I said the same thing, is this glass of water real? I would do the same thing. I will touch the water, I drink it and confirm it's real. How long will it be real? Only till I am dreaming. When I wake up, there was no glass, no water. Then what created it? If there was no glass, no real glass at all, no water at all, 
What created this? Merely a dream experience. I am calling an experience into reality because I am not awake. Is it possible that the same thing is happening now that I am calling this real because I am not awake? And what I am thinking is calling me awake is because I can see all of you, you can see me, we can talk to each other and we can touch, taste, smell, everything we can do with our sense perception. If we wake up, at least a possibility exists that we can wake up. If we woke up from this dream, there will be no water and there will be nobody. It will be just a dream. Now I can say that if I go to sleep and dream that there is a glass of water there, I am seeing it because when I wake up I also see a glass of water. Therefore there is some reality. It's not exact reality. But what I saw in a dream disappeared when I woke up, but I saw another glass of water which also occurred in the dream, so it had a reality somewhere else, but not where I thought it was real. Is it possible that all we are experiencing here, when we wake up further, everything will be there, but not what, how we see it here. This will become unreal and open up another reality. Is it possible? What would happen if we really woke up to another level? Well, let's examine what we all know. Higher wakefulness, I don't hear many stories about that, hear a lot of stories about waking up from a dream state. Let's go back to the dream state and say, in the dream, we met a large crowd of people. 100 people were sitting there and we recognized those sitting in the front. They are our friends. We met them many times. We remember them and we saw many strangers also in the crowd. In the dream we see that when we wake up, what we saw in the front rows are actually they are our friends. But they were only in the dream. They are sleeping in their own places. But they were there. We can say in the dream some part of it was more real than the other. If a definition of reality is, if it still exists when you wake up, then that means when you wake up, you know some part of what you saw was real even when you woke up. Therefore, there was some element of reality even when it was really unreal. That brings us to a very strange concept of reality. It is relative. That means what looks real here, part of it can be real, part not. And we don't know which one is real, which is not. So we are living in a very similar state now. Think if there is a possibility of waking up further. If we can't wake up further, this is the end of the story. Then we only dream and then we wake up once. But many of us have dreams within dreams. We have had a dream and then we went to sleep and had another dream. And when we woke up, we thought we were awake. And we thought we are really awake. That was a dream. And then we wake up again. And we find, oh, that was a second dream. It was a dream within a dream. Many of us have had that. If we have had that experience, that you can have a dream within a dream, the possibility exists that this dream that we are having now could be a dream within a dream. We can't rule it out. Therefore, it is possible if that is a pattern that we can create a reality by simple process of going to sleep and dreaming. That's a good explanation, good story. Good story to explain a lot of things. It can explain that while we dream, we can have a new reality. When we wake up, a new reality, some part of it Still in the, old, in the old reality that we saw, some part new, we can wake up again. How many times can we wake up? We no idea at all. We have no idea, is this dream within a dream going on for thousands of times? 
maybe there are multiple way of dreaming and there is no end to it. When will we find that there is some end to this dreaming process? To carry the story further as an explanation based on our experience of dreaming alone and waking up from dream, if we wake up and discover that what we are seeing real is real only to an extent that our cover upon our bodies, cover that we are wearing on the self, which we thought ourselves had changed. Supposing we only look at this, when we go to sleep and dream, this solid body of ours is in lying in bed. No movement, sometimes little movement based on kind of dream. But the dream body we use is very different from this. The dream body can jump from a big height and not get hurt. Very different experience from this body. The dream body can move very fast. Very different from this body. The dream body can be in Chicago in one moment, in second moment in New York and feel it is natural. It's impossible for this body. How has all the characteristics of a dream body changed so radically that we are having something so different in a dream body than we have in a physical body? Is it possible that if we wake up further, we will find the same kind of difference there? We don't know what the difference is, but it looks like if the pattern is of sleeping and dreaming and having changed bodies, likelihood is that when law of probability says likelihood, if we wake up again, our body will be different and will have different rules of operation, not the one we are having here. If we wake up again, we'll have a different kind of body. There's a law of probability based on our actual experiences in sleeping and dreaming here. Carrying this further, we could keep on waking up. So long as we see a lot of people around us in the dream, in this wakeful state. Excuse me, my throat is a little bad. So long as we see a lot of people whom we know, the number of people if we see who we know become less from what we saw in a dream. And we see large number of people all over the world, billions of people, we know very few compared to that number. And supposing we find that the number of people we know become less intimately who we know. Supposing we wake up further and we find that the number of people we really know are just a few. Supposing we wake up and find the number of people we know is only two of us. A big startling thing. And supposing we wake up and find there is only one dreamer, wouldn't that be an answer to this question? How many times can you wake up? If you end up with one dreamer, what else? The same dreamer is dreaming again and again, but one dream. If you can reach the state of one dreamer, you found all the answers. Now, we have a natural way of sleeping. Everybody sleeps. Sometimes they say sleep is so inevitable in our life that even if we know if we sleep, we'll die, we'll still sleep. Sleep is so powerful. To create a sleep and to have dreams is very powerful. Some people tell me, we sleep very soundly, we don't have dreams. I must tell you, we all dream every night, several times. When I came to this country first, there used to be sleep institutes studying dreams. And we used to have people who said we never dreamt. And we put them to sleep in a lab and put the cameras on top of them and every time the eyes moved rapidly, we would wake them up and they tell what they are dreaming, they are going to react to sleep, then they again after 15-20 minutes the eyes would be moving, we would wake them up, what are you dreaming and put them to sleep. In the morning they said we had no dream and we recorded all the dream and their words of the dream and played them. 
they couldn't believe it. Every person dreams, every person sleeps. It's a natural cycle for the maintenance of this physical body. That is why you may not know that you dream, but you dream. So this is an inevitable thing. If it is so inevitable at the physical state, could it not be inevitable at every state of wakefulness? I'm just talking of the law of probability. Stories are made on law of probability. And the probability is that we are bound to sleep. The one dreamer has to be bound to sleep and he can create the many. The many can go to sleep, bound to sleep. Not only uh, they want to sleep, they are bound to sleep to create even more. Bound to sleep to create a vast space and time. Is it possible to wake up to a state where there is no space and time? May be possible, but not imaginable. We can't imagine. We can't imagine existing in zero space, zero time. Is it possible that we are existing? Is it possible at all to know that? Only when we wake up that state. Where could that state be? We don't know. But is it possible that I am drawing up a nice picture that there is one dreamer alone dreaming again and again and creating the many and even creating space and time. Are these stories verifiable at least to the extent like I verified this glass is real? At least for understanding it here, where we are. Fortunately, there is a methodology available to check this whole story. Exactly the same way I checked out if the water is real or not. And what is the method? The method is to induce wakefulness. How do we do that? Supposing a person is sleeping and I want to induce his wakefulness in the middle of his sleep, like we did in the Sleep Institute. We said, get up, get up. And we moved him and he got up. He went to sleep again. That means we can have a way of waking up if somebody says while we are sleeping, wake up, wake up, and tugs us. We wake up before time. So it is a possibility that if somebody is awake and tries to wake us up using the same method which we would use to wake up a person, and he says, wake up, wake up. And he gives a little push on the sleeping body, not this body. If there's a dream body, I'm talking of one who is awake above this. If a person is awake above that and gives us a push and a tug, we wake up. Can we wake up on our own? Sometimes when the dream is horrible. If we are having a big nightmare, a terrible dream, we wake up. If we are going to drown somewhere, we wake up in the dream. So there are some instances where a natural event happening in a dream can wake us up. Maybe those natural events exist here too. And we can sometimes have a strange feeling we are awake to our level. People often have these experiences. We suddenly felt we were in another world. We don't know if it is a dream or real. <clears throat> it looked real. More real than this. But then we woke up here, so we said it must be a very lucid dream. Must be an astral dream. Must be a higher dream. It happened because of the trauma of this dream state because of something extraordinary happening in this dream state. Whatever the programming was for this dream state, some events were there which could wake us up momentarily, temporarily, a little while. And we are back into sleep, into the same reality. The most wonderful thing is that when we are dreaming in this, in this body and have a dream body, 
we take that as absolute real no matter how many times we go to sleep we go to sleep every night every time the dream body is real what does it mean it means our power of understanding what is real is limited to the experience we are having at that time we can't have any experience of any other reality at that time it means the reality if it is relative to different levels of wakefulness it is completely confined to one state so that if we in the middle of our sleep wake up and discover we are in the bed a dream is going on somewhere else and we there is a mix up there and we sleep again the dream continues as a reality and the little wakeful state does not affect the nature of the dream or its experience as real so obviously if we look at these things we find the reality gets confined to one state of experience one state of wakefulness if this is so then if we wake up to another level of wakefulness and we know it's more real and we come back here we can't call that real anymore very lucid dream it was a wonderful experience but now i am in reality that was something is can't call it real more real because our concept our method of checking reality is confined to one level of experience it's amazing how this is so beautifully placed one above the other as if there are several realities and we experience a reality based on what our experience at that level of wakefulness is if we wake higher the reality changes the rest become the dream supposing we have a dream within a dream and we regard the second dream as real when we wake up to the dream that was the first dream we never think it's another dream there no way it is wakefulness only when we wake up the next stage we say they were both dream that means that in this process of wakefulness if we find we can wake to one more level not only we will find that this was a dream state we are having now that the dreams we have had within this were also dreams and all unreal only that state was real if we come back here to sleep again that will become unreal this will become real imagine how our capability of judging reality is so limited by the experience we are having it's amazing how we are confined so much restricted from knowing what is real we just judge by the perceptions we can make at different states now as i said if a person who is awakened he gives us a nudge and wakes us up before time what is before time supposing i want to sleep at night i say I want to sleep at 10 o'clock and wake up at 6 o'clock 8 hours of sleep before 6 o'clock it will be considered early 5 o'clock may not be too early but certainly 2 o'clock in the early morning in the middle of the night somebody wakes me up at 2 o'clock i'm likely to go to sleep again and my intermission in the dream state of wakeful state will be very short what is the time for sleeping here that if we look at the experience continuity of experience from birth to death is a sleeping period normal if somebody who is close to death begins to say i am talking to other people we say is getting crazy because he is going to die maybe he is just waking up people start talking like that little babies are born they can't talk anything when they too small but they sometimes look like they know more some babies start talking of things that they haven't even seen here and we can't explain it maybe they are talking of something when they were awake now we are sleeping if we look at all the evidence that exists today we find our sleep pattern of the wakeful state is a long pattern of several years maybe 100 years on average therefore the sleep pattern is only 8 hours at night 100 years here 
Therefore, because of the nature of the length of experience we have, it gives us a bigger convic conviction, this is real. That was a short period, this is very long, it can't be unreal. What happens if we wake up again and we find that we sleep once in 10,000 years? Our old concept will change about reality, just based on the time. What if we fi find that when we wake up again, we are living for infinity, forever? The whole concept of reality will change. So the whole secret of finding how far these stories are true or not, is to see if somebody awake can wake us up. Now when we are dreaming, we, we can't really ask somebody, come and wake us up. We are in a dream state. When we ask somebody, supposing the dream is not the one you like, I'm talking about dream in a physical state, you are just actual dreaming below the physical state. Supposing you want to wake up and say, I know it's a dream. Who is saying that? Sometimes we say that in our dream. Many of you have done it, I know, you tell me. That I know it's a dream, now how do I wake up? I remember my own experience, I would say, let me find where I'm sleeping. I would run around to look where I'm sleeping, where is my bedroom. Of course, when I woke up, I found I was no, we never went anywhere. But in the dream, the dream body was searching for something to wake up. Is it possible that here also we are searching? And if we are searching for something, is it, a, is it possible that the search that we do here is appearing in the sleeping body like People, when they are afraid in the body, they start screaming in the sleeping body. They start making movements, which we also observed in the Sleep Institute, how the physical body responds to dreams. If somebody is searching in a dream, body shows the signs of it, which is sleeping. If we are searching here, and a sleeping body at the higher stage of awareness wakes, is calling, and a friend of ours is close by and says he is having a bad dream, let me wake him up. He can say, wake up and give us a talk. Is it possible? How can we be sure this has happened? One way, wake up and see he is still saying, well, welcome, wake up. If we are wake up and he is still trying to say, okay, get up, get up there. He is there, we have seen him. No more evidence is needed that he woke us up. Is it possible the same thing can happen here? That when we say we are searching to go home, we are searching to go to reality, we are seekers, that a friend of ours sitting close by is actually waking us. Is it possible that the friend who is waking us up is also part of the dream? Great master used to give the example that when a person is sleeping, there's a pattern of experience going on with him. And he gave example, a man is carrying his horses back to the stables and his friend is saying, wake up. He says, who will take care of my horses? The statement, who will take care of my horses, the dream state. The wakeful person says, I will take care of it. Wake up. We are assured somebody has taken care of our horses. And wake up. There are no horses. Nor was that guy a liar to say, I will take care of your horses. He only participated in our dream. Is it possible that the same thing can happen now? When can we be certain that such a thing has happened? When we wake up and find there were no horses, but the friend is there. This can happen at every stage. Depending how awake the friend is. If he is awake up to one level, he will wake up us there. Another friend is sitting somewhere. 
may be the same then he can make up a score the same way now if somebody has had these experiences of being woken up by a friend repeatedly and discover that the reality is very different from what we have been imagining that we are creating realities that the dream system is a method of creating reality and the reality is only way being experienced by sense perception by the manner of perception sense perceptions only go to a very limited state if we understand that this can be a process of wakefulness what are we understand what is the meaning of waking up meaning is simple change of the state of your awareness that's all that happens when you wake up you find you are no longer in a dream state of awareness a different state of awareness you can wake up any number of times each level makes a new state of awareness then it becomes easier to understand all these stories that this question of dreaming within a dream has gone on long enough till we can wake up to a state of discovering one dreamer alone have anybody had these experiences of uh, waking up we can't tell because we are taking the current dream state the current state of awareness as the only reality can somebody who has had one level of experience of wakefulness come and tell us that to be awake not really because that person no matter how strong the memory of the experience may be is now talking in reality and will say i had a dream this guy is talking of a dream this is a dream body it was not him at all so when we hear people making announcements they have had this they have had this the very fact they making announcements show they had nothing but if a person has had its dream experience at what point can he retain the experience it should not go away only when we discover that the whole series of experiences we dream like and the dreamer recovers the ultimate dreaming wakeful experience when that happens we discover the whole thing was dreamt where the single dreamer is and the single dreamer remains the single dreamer never change the rest of all experience is generated by dreams if we reach a state of discovering that what we are thinking is many is only one dreamer and we reach that state we can never forget anything that has happened the awareness becomes complete only when awareness becomes complete you can have awareness of everything if awareness is not complete each awareness becomes its own reality that is why when we talk of spiritual awareness a spiritual journey we are talking of the possibility of the single dreamer waking us up but who is the single dreamer waking us up <laughs> if there is only one dreamer we can't be separated from that at all we are the dreamers we are the dreamers how can we say we is there only one this incorrect statement we are the dreamers is incorrect but i will correct it the self is the dreamer now i'm not putting it in myself i'm saying self what does self mean self means the one that we experience is having the dream the experience no matter what no matter who if we look at the world we see a lot of people we say who is the self everybody around us is the self which self are we talking about only one self in one body with one brain with one sense perceptions is seeing all the others two are not seeing only one is seeing in the dream we can see thousands of people only one dreamer is seeing thousands of people is it possible 
that this whole series of creations we are talking of is just the experience of oneself, one dreamer. In every stage that oneself becomes myself, because there is nowhere else. If we dream or we see a dream, we are seeing it as oneself, the self that is dreaming. All others are dreaming. Is it possible that the pattern is exactly the same at all levels of reality? One can find out only at the level of one dreamer. If you have the level of one dreamer, you can find out. Okay, then if there is only one dreamer, who is the friend we are talking of who says, I will hold your horse, sir? That means the friend is also nobody except ourselves. I am sharing the truth with you today. There is only one thing. This is all relatively created. If you go step by step, one level of wakefulness to the other, you will discover that what we are using as means of checking reality, sense perception, is merely a creation in order to experience reality in this way. If you wake up, you will discover sense perception is merely a body you are wearing, like you are wearing physical material body. Sense perceptions are just a cover. If you wake up one more step, you will discover sense perception disappears, like when you wake up one step, this body disappears. Perception remains. Sense perception disappears. And then you discover that the perception you are using can perceive anything much more than the sense perceptions could. Sense perceptions has limitations. Look at the perception of vision, seeing. People say there is something here. Why are you not seeing? It is not within the seven colors of the rainbow. It is beyond, it is infrared, ultraviolet, it's there. We are seeing so little. When they have examined the same vibration, the same frequencies which are creating vision for us, extending way beyond how little we are seeing here. Maybe we can see a lot more when we wake up if the sense perceptions are all covered and physical body is not. Imagine the expansion of vision that will take place. And imagine the limitation being removed completely if perception alone existed. That is why we say who perceives in this physical body when we say we perceive. I said to you, here is a glass of water. Did my eyes say that? No, they can see no glass of water. They can only see a shape and a color. They only have rods and cones. In the eyes, in the retina. They can see nothing more than shape and color. What makes the glass of water? Did sense perception make it? No. Who made it? Our thinking mind, by association of idea, this shape and water has always been called water, always a glass, must be glass of water. An assumption made by our mind's perception, not by the eyes, not by the hand. Not by the mouth. Understand that perception by sense perception is very limited. You can expand it further, still very limited. Go to the next state of wakefulness, and you discover what true perception is. A perception where you know this was a glass of water before it existed. Where you know that by creating an image like this, you can call it a glass of water. That's the kind of perception. You have awakened yourself to a level where you discover the very nature of the ability to watch is creating what you are watching. It's a very big thing. Gives us a notion of a higher reality which you can't even imagine sitting here. Yet it's achievable. One wake up and one little on the other side by a further wakened up person. If that person happened to wake up further, what would happen? We see perception itself 
is a very a device to extend yourself outside of yourself. When we perceive, what are we perceiving? Not ourselves. Perceiving something outside of ourselves. Perception has created an outside. Perception has created time and space. Perception has created all this world that we are seeing at every level. If somebody gives us a nudge, takes us above, we will find perception was created just for creation, for the sake of having these experiences. And not real. Created. It's a body. Third cover upon ourselves after the sense perception. The mind is merely a cover. The thinking mind, mind, creative mind, the mind that can visualize anything, the mind that can imagine anything, the mind that can dream anything, just a creation for perception at that level. We rise, perception was merely created to have a strange experience, but a wonderful one of space and time. Now we go back so close to ourselves, we say, who are we? We are not the perception, we are not the sense perception, we are not the physical body. Who are we? We are the experiencer of all these things. Who is experiencing these? First time you discover the nature of the self. We talk here, myself, wrong. Yourself, wrong. Self, right. The only point when we can first say, we discovered the self, the experiencer, is the reality, not the experience. At any time. When you discover that, then you discover, can you be woken up further? Yes. That's amazing. And even after discovering of the self, discovering of the whole power of the self, you can still be woken up to discover there is nothing else but the self. Totality is the self. I have mentioned these things in a different way. So you understand when we talk of different levels, there is a physical level. We have to rise to the astral level, nothing more than sensory perception. Rise to the causal level, nothing more than the mental perception. We rise to soul, discover our true soul, our reality, nothing but the self. You rise to there being all known at one time, totality, our true home. Where is it? Where the self is, right here. Where is it when you are dreaming? In the dream body, right there, not in the sleeping body. Any experience you are ever having is the experience of the single self. It's amazing that this whole story about creation can be actually experienced. What do you need to have this experience? A friend who thinks you want to wake up. How will a friend who is sitting next to you at a wakeful state, which ultimately is your own self, how does that friend know at different level that you want to wake up? Because you are saying you are tired of your dream, you are tired, you want to wake up. You are screaming for that. When we scream, which means when we seek to get out, the friend hears. It depends when we scream. Most of the time we are so absorbed in these experiences, we don't feel like screaming at all. If you want to scream, we want to scream at the creation. Scream at each other. Husband, wife, screaming at wife, wife screaming at husband, friends screaming at friends, bosses screaming at employees, employees screaming at their home. Everybody screaming at each other. Nobody screaming to the friend to wake me up. How do we scream? Here we use our mouth to scream. Do we have to use this mouth? It's a dream mouth. You can't scream with a dream mouth. <laughs> the dream mouth is only the dream. How can you scream that it reaches your waking self, which you want to wake up the sleeping self? You scream within yourself. Now, when, we, when I say within yourself, people want to understand what is within ourselves. Very simple answer. Very simple. If you close the eyes of the physical body and imagine you are there, that's your within self. So simple. You can all imagine. Imagination, the greatest gift given to us. Imagination is so useful. 
that if we can imagine something inside, it's not physical. It's imaginary. Where is it coming from? Inside our consciousness, same consciousness. And if we can imagine we are inside, and there we seek, friend, we'll be there in the same form and wake us up. All this is built into our system to wake up. We wake up to some states and go to sleep again and again. That's natural. We've been doing it for, we don't know how long, ever since time was created. But to wake up in the middle is a great experience. I am coming to share with you that you have, all of you here sitting here, have the potential and the possibility of waking up in the middle. All you need to do, seek inside, not outside. Seeking outside will give you what is outside. Only seeking inside will give you what is inside. The self that is experiencing is not outside at all. Even the self-perceptions are being used by the self inside, not outside. Where does the self sit in a physical body? If you want to say, I want to discover if I have an inner self and I don't know what state it is sleeping, but I want to know where it is in this physical body. Where are you experiencing that self right now? It's the same self, single dreamer, same self. The dreamer that creates space and time, same self. The dreamer that per has perception, same self. The dreamer that is having self perception, same self. And we, the same self. There's only one, therefore, there's only one self. Where is it? For us individuals, where is that self sitting there? Let's contemplate. Use our brain, use our thinking power, use our introspection, use our imagination. Use everything that we have in our head to locate where am I sitting. Then you imagine by the process of elimination. Am I sitting in my hand? <laughs> Not really, yeah, but I know I have a hand. I know I have a hand. I know it's on the right side of me. If I can say my hand is on the right side of me, I can't be there. Then where am I saying this from? It's on the right, my hand is the right side. My feet are below me. My throat is below me. My nose is below me. Where am I saying all these things from as a way of location? I close my eyes and say, where did I say? Where I am? Where am I saying this from? And you come to a very narrow space within the head. You can make it even more narrow by keeping on questioning. Am I close to the right ear? No, it's the right ear is away. Left ear equally distant away. Then where are you? I am by the process of elimination, I find I am exactly in the center behind the eyes. Exactly center. I can even locate it up to a millimeter, less than that, by just saying, if I draw two lines behind my eyes, parallel lines behind my eyes, they are both on my side. I can feel it. They are both passing side. If I draw a line between the ears, I can feel that line is where I am. But between the other two lines, very simple. Between the ear, behind the eyes, exactly in the center. It's very interesting that that is where I feel I am. Is there anything in this physical body, the physical system that is all covering me and operating as a very efficient machine here? Is there something right there where I'm feeling I'm there? The most important pineal glands and pituitary body are right where I'm sitting. They must have a strong function. One is the father of all hormones that produce. The whole body is being controlled by that. And the other one has the power to rationalize which is distributed in the gray matter of the brain. They perform a function. When I was working in the government of India, in India, a head of state came to visit us. And unfortunately, he had a car accident, went into coma. For several days, he was in coma. We felt very embarrassed. 
head of state of another country might die here. We said we have to save him. We called for the brain surgeons of the entire world wherever we could find. From Vienna, from Montreal, from wherever we found that people had done thousands of brain surgeries at that time. We tried to get them. And a leading brain surgeon came and he said, this is deep coma and he is getting less aware of what is around. And then we asked him, what makes a person conscious? That he is unconscious now, what made a person conscious? And he said, that sir is a problem we have not been able to answer till now. Neither philosophers, nor doctors, nor anybody able to say what is life and consciousness. But one thing we know, if we put a laser beam on different parts of the brain, we can deactivate the functioning of particular sense perceptions. If we put a laser beam in the central area near the pineal and epidural body, a person becomes unconscious. Some proof that what is creating a consciousness and ability to experience is making us work from there. And that's exactly what we experience. If that is so, we know exactly where to call for our friend to help us. Right there. That is why it is so important that if you want to reach your truth of who you are and thereby find your true home, the place to ask for it is behind your eyes at what has now been called the third eye center. Interesting phrase. Very people, a lot of people use it. Third eye center. Why third eye? Why not center? Why not center of consciousness, center of our abilities? Where third eye is coming from? We have only two eyes. Why call it third eye? There's a strange truth about that too. The strange truth is, when we have two eyes and look at this world, we are not seeing what the two eyes are seeing. Most people think we see what the eyes see. Two eyes are seeing two different things. We see one thing. Where do they combine? If the two eyes are seeing two different things and movie makers have made use of it to create 3D movies by putting special glasses on us and combining the images by glasses by putting two pictures on the screen and making them look like one and creating space with that, are we not doing the same thing? Without glasses. Where are our glasses that two eyes are seeing two different things and there is only one picture ahead of us. That's what we think. Maybe there are two pictures. But some inner glasses are combining there to see one image. If you study this phenomenon, a pure phenomena of understanding optics, if you understand this phenomena, you will find the two images are being seen by us at the third eye sector. That's where we see the world. We don't see the world at the level of the eyes. We see the world at the level of the third eye. That's why the nomenclature is appropriate. The one that sees is the third eye. Not third eye looking at heavens. Third eye looking at this world. We are using third eye to see this world. I can go even further. Tell you, even the third eye cannot see anything. Third eye will see the shape and colors which the two eyes are seeing. The brain will see that's a glass of water. It is the mind that sees, and not the eyes, not the sense perception. And I can go further, one step. The mind is created by the self, only self can see. Only self can experience this world. Only the self can experience the wakeful world. Only the self can discover itself. No other way. And what we call a awakened person is no more than a clone, a duplicate of our own self. Doesn't look like it. The friend who woke me up and I saw him and in this body, a white beard. In the inner body, white beard looked a little different. And sometimes it looked like he had a shape. 
I never saw him shaving in physical body. But in the inner self, he looked different. What did he look like and how did he behave? When I tried to see what does he look like, I found he looks more like what I looked like at that time. That means what he was here and I thought he's just an ordinary perfect living master, guru, satguru, all kind of names given to the man. That really he was a friend sitting inside and this face of his was merely a reflection of a real face which could change. And it did change. So did mine. During many meditation sessions that I have, I ask people during meditation to imagine they are sitting in this nice beautifully decorated room. They can imagine anything. We can imagine that this little space in our head, a nice beautiful room. At that time, the boundaries of this body disappear. The room is thick. So imaginatively, we can make this a big space. And be in the center. If I try to fit myself into the head, I will be very small. In the imaginative space, I can be as big as I am here. In the more realistic. Meditation becomes simpler by remaining the same size. And not a little pygmy sitting there and trying to find something. Another problem. If we try to fit ourselves within the little head and try to make our small, we cannot be this self. We make a very big mistake then. Then we create something which we are looking at. And that's not self. Self is looking at it. So we remain the same self. Very big mistake in meditation people make when we say, imagine you are sitting behind the eyes in the head. They think they have to imagine in this head, physical head. And therefore, they try to contract themselves to fit in the head. When you contract yourself, it's not you. What you're watching is what you created. Not you. You are watching that. Supposing you make the mistake and want to know that if that is not me, that's what I'm seeing. Who is seeing it? You pull back, you get back to the same big body and come out. You can have no concentration and meditation at all. Very big mistake. A lot of people make for a long time. How do we then solve the problem? Solve the problem. Imagine you are here in the center. The whole head has expanded to the size of a room. And now you are sitting in the center in the same form, looking at things the way you are looking here. Same body looking at from there now. Same self has transported itself there. You have to transport by imagination the whole of yourself there not make a small image. Now when we transport ourselves there and place ourselves there, in meditation exercises, I tell them, pick up a mirror and look at yourself. And surprising results. Hardly anybody ever sees the way they look at the mirror in the physical body. Who are they seeing? The self. But not this self. Which self? The imaginative self. No. If it was imaginative self, you would imagine the same self you are hearing here. How can it change by you are trying to imagine one thing and you see something else? You are seeing your inner self. Therefore, it's just a means of verifying that by exercising imagination, you are not imagining something from here. You are picking up something from there. Sometimes you might remember many of you, I have said when I finish the meeting, go to the roof, go to the ceiling of this building, go above it and pick up a gift. Imagine any gift. 90% of people pick up gifts they haven't even imagined. Why? When you want to imagine something, it should be what you are trying to imagine. How something else comes up? Because what you are seeing is not what you are imagining from here. It, it belongs to that state which we are calling imagination. Only when we wake up do we discover the reality of that imagination. Inner imagination, not physical imagination. So this is a very big, very big subject. 
not subject for study and for discussion, subject for experiencing. So I can lead you to experience is showing that the power of imagination shifts you to the inner self. It's only power, a tool. Just like saying visualize yourself, it's a tool to do something. Imagine you are there, just a tool. But if you imagine yourself there in a large space, beautiful space, decorated space, and there you ask your friend, for wakefulness, friend is there. If you can imagine yourself there, can't you imagine your friend sitting next to you there? If you imagine your friend is sitting next to you, is he the same friend that you saw outside the physical body or somebody else? If you physically try to sit here and imagine, it will be your imagination only, not real. If you imagine there, it's real. Test it out. These are very simple things that you come to know by experiences. The whole secret is experience. Secret is not discussion. Secret is not sitting with friends and telling, oh, we know all that, we can tell, and we can tell all the seven stages, eight stages, no, I have over twelve stages. You can make hundred stories like that. The secret is lying in experience, personal experience. Experience is very difficult because we limit experience by the limitations of the physical world. When we want to imagine something there, we are imagining with the standards, with the perception of physical world. Open up. It's not physical. Stay at that level. Every state of wakefulness will be at that level. Not that we apply physical standards. Oh, Satchkhand is a huge place, beautiful place. We each one has a separate island of ours. And we have some beautiful company there. Even heavens are described as beautiful, beautiful females, beautiful males, and you can have fun there, which we are looking for here. We are transporting our needs, our desires, our wishes of this world into all kinds of imagination. That's not the imagination I'm talking of. An imagination that they pre-exist there. You're rising up to it and then discovering it. So when you do meditation properly, then you find that the friends you are asking for, do you have a friend there? Can you be sure of that? If somebody who has discovered friend there can tell. I can only tell you this. If you are seeking to wake up, the friend is sitting next to you. As simple as that. Why? Because a seeker is a self. The friend is the same self. They can't be separated. If you are a seeker of wakefulness, the friend is next to you. And wake up and you see the friend there. He look in the beginning, same like oh, we had a friend outside. The physical dream, he is in that dream. In how many dreams is he there? In every dream till the end when he becomes yourself. That is who we call a perfect living master. Who is a perfect living master? Not somebody who is wearing special garments and special clothes and talks in a special way or puts special, special colors on his forehead. That's not a perfect living master at all. Because he is trying to convince illusion that he is real. How does he know about reality? He is trying to convince somebody about something by wearing something external to say, I know something internal because you can see something external. How could he know anything about reality? Reality is known when the friend taps you inside, wakes you. And how does he wake you? You become a seeker from inside. How does he say, wake up? You become a seeker inside. Seeking is not coming just like that. The human mind is keeping us so absorbed in the experience outside here, so absorbed in the physical experience here and other imaginative experiences, other desires, attachments, so absorbed in these, we have no time to seek. We don't know where to seek. When the mind says, I understand what is seeking, he says, I know where to seek. Go to the clubs, go to nightclubs, go to theatres, go to shows, go to the world, 
go to the beaches, go to the mountains, you'll find. Telling us all things that are created here, that's where you search and seek. Seek what? Then we get mixed up. What are we seeking? Are we seeking the truth? The reality? Or are we seeking something else? Ultimately, a universal answer comes up. We are seeking happiness because we are unhappy. Why are we unhappy? Because what we desire, we can't get. We have so many expectations. I can do that, I can do that. And they don't happen. I get disappointed and unhappy. What creates unhappiness basically in our life? Disappointment. What causes disappointment? Expectation. Imagine, <clears throat> I told a friend of mine, live three months without expecting anything. You'll be happy forever. He said, how is that possible? He said, try it out. Unless you expect, you cannot be disappointed. Expectations create disappointment and create unhappiness. And we are disappointed all the time because we expect too much. What is the solution to that? Expectation comes so natural to us. We have to expect something to happen. We are doing so many things. We expect some results. We expect some response. How can we convert to something else? Change the word expect to accept. Very simple change of spelling. Acceptance. What happens? Accept. No disappointment. Appointment only comes expect, not accept. Accept what is there. I told a friend of mine, I said, try it out because I have used it effectively. Accept what comes. Everything falls in place because it is in place. Expectations are trying to move it out of place. Everything is in place as it's supposed to be for this life. And we are trying to expect things to change it. It doesn't change, so we are disappointed and unhappy. If you accept what is there, your life will be as smooth as ever, with no disappointments, no unhappiness. So I told him, try this method of accepting. He told me next week, I tried your method of accepting, but then I was expecting something to happen, never happened. <laughs> <laughs> That's our mind. That's how the mind works. Just like one man told me, wrote an email to me, I have discovered that the spiritual path is not effort. We think it's a big struggle that we have to make in order to succeed. You can't succeed in anything without your effort. But spiritual path is not effort. It is effortless. He says it's an effortless thing that happens. So he wrote the last line, Oh, now I am going to try my meditation very hard to be effortless. <laughs> That's how mind works. We don't see the contradiction in these things. So that is why these are amazing revelations that can come to us by our own seeking insight. If you seek yourself, if you seek the inner reality, what is real, if you seek what is our true home in which we are experiencing the whole world? A perfect living master will appear at, to you at that very state at which you are. Supposing you are in a dream state, he'll appear in a dream state. If you are in a wakeful state, he'll appear in a wakeful state. If you are already in the astral state, he'll appear in the astral state. Seeking in the secret. Seek and you'll find. As simple as that. I forgot the agenda of my meeting today <laughs> because I was thinking that if we reach this point, how will we look at this world, the creation itself? If a perfect living master, like my master, had experienced every level right up to the top and he knows we are all one experience, experiencing many and discovers what will be what will be his reaction just with that awareness. First I saw if he knows we are all one, he can have no hatred for anybody.
because you're all one. Who are you hating? You're not hating yourself. You love everybody because you love yourself. So that's a very big change. Looking at it. Then he'll think this is just an experience generated for pleasure, entertainment. It's not a serious thing at all. Thank you very much.